Steven Asante, perhaps the most infamous person to ever do my 600 pound life, the most requested on this channel for sure. Everybody's like, Steven Asante, Steven Asante. I had to mentally prepare for that because I know that this guy is just straight nightmare fuel when it comes to my 600 pound life. But uh, we're gonna get right into it. But first, let's get a message from Steven himself. Hi Sean, it's Steven Asante from My 600 Pound Life. I do hope you get this message and you're doing well. Hey Sean, we were both 600 pounds and that, that's door. So glad we both turned our lives around. Congratulations on losing half your body weight. Stop doing weird things. You want me to call the news? I'll call them right now. I'll call the news right now and get your face and how you manipulate the system. It says here he once asked me if I could even touch my toes. I told him he'd buy me dinner first. I would like a Big Mac. Oh, wait, this is great. I love this part. I would like a Big Mac meal, three 20 piece nuggets, three McChickens, five double cheeseburgers, and a McFlurry. Sounds about right. All right. Take her easy. If she's easy, take her twice. Wow, Steven, that's a hell of a McDonald's order, buddy. You might want to slow it down a little bit. But uh, that's 100% not a cameo. I did not pay $44 for that, and I did not write a script, man. That's all his thoughts. That's all him. I didn't write any of that random stuff. You know, I'm not that kind of person. But uh, let's get right into his episode and see exactly how this one goes. An 800-pound man from Cranston desperate for help after he says Rhode Island Hospital told him to leave. For the past 80 days, Stephen was getting the help he needed at Rhode Island Hospital. But after Stephen violated his care plan by ordering pizza, Stephen said the hospital told You got evicted for pizza? Buddy, we're here to lose weight. What the hell's going on? Told him he can no longer stay. Stephen's father says taking his son home will be a death sentence. So the two men say they'll continue to drive until they find a place that can help. I just don't know where to drive. The only death sentence is driving that car with him in the back because your suspension's not prepared. I called everybody, everybody you can think of in the state of Rhode Island, and nobody can help me. Stephen Asante is being transported to my care in Houston right now, and I'm not sure what to expect. From what I understand, he suffers from severe psychological issues that make it problematic to treat him. The infamous pound psychosis. Uh, I think you gotta be a little crazy to let yourself get to 600. So he's going to be a unique case. This looks really yummy. Oh no, don't ruin whipped cream and nipples for me. Who let this guy put his boobs in the banana cream? This is definitely psychotic behavior. His brother Justin is over 600 pounds and he's also coming with him. So it sounds like a perfect storm of dysfunction is coming and we may be facing the hardest challenge yet, try to help the Asantis. You know it's bad when the guy that saved thousands of people this big says this is the hardest challenge yet. I'm at Kent Hospital right now. I was living in my dad's truck for approximately a week before I came here because I got kicked out of a previous hospital for ordering a pizza. But now this hospital is asking me to leave because they can't help people my size because I'm too morbidly obese. Oh, God. This lady's going to get pink eye. You guys deserve hazard pay for that one. You're really getting up in there, lady. 
but Ken Hospital has been trying to make the arrangements for transport for me to go out of state to Houston and see Dr. Nazarden. Nowhere else will take me anymore, so he's my last hope. Damn, look at those legs. This guy must have done ballet in like his younger life. But the fact that I moved from hospital to hospital is frustrating. Because no one can handle my weight. One, two, three, up and in. And sometimes I get frustrated with the staff and I get crazy upset. So I have moments where I yell a little bit or I'll just have trouble control. I don't trust anybody that looks at me like that. Looks like this dude's ready to 50 shades of fat one of them for doing that little rag trick she just did to his butt. Either that or he's planning to eat him like, the, he, like he's a cannibal or something. My attitude. Hello, are you my nurse? I am a, a bedpan. I don't like that. I don't like her. You. You want to hang her? You say it. Die. I'm on the bedpan for a half an hour. I got piss all over my bed. So get up off the bedpan. We just watched him stand up, right? This guy's like a big baby. Is it going to be this way the whole damn time? Get out of here. Okay. I need help. I'll call the cops. So okay. me, broad. Do not. Mr. Santi, I can't. What the hell are the calorie cops going to do except show up and arrest you, for your friggin' nutcase? I can't help you if you're hollering at me. I just came in at seven. I have been on this thing for half an hour. Hearing people a half an hour. So if you're not in here in five minutes, the police will be called. Because I got proof, mother. That's what I know I couldn't be a nurse because I'm definitely peeing in this guy's jello. So hopefully if I meet Dr. Nazardin, he can help me. This is a house where I, Steven used to live in when he was at his biggest. That dishwasher is going to give somebody gonorrhea. When's the last time you cleaned that damn thing? Here's the bathroom that I had to get him into. Who carved office on the bathroom door? Because that's hilarious. Where he broke this, being so heavy that all his weight cracked this whole piece right off. And then when he used the bathroom, he leaned up against this, and somehow, someway, this cracked. So I'm surprised he... I always wondered how I didn't break the toilet at my biggest. But who knew, like, who knew that you did not need a sledgehammer? You have the diabetic demolition team come in here. We can crack everything. He didn't break this. He broke this pot. Here, I'll show you the bedroom that he spent 24-7 in. This is basically all his stuffy animals and his TV, his videos. He just couldn't get out. If you're a grown man with that many stuffed animals, I'm kind of scared of what you're doing to Froggy over there. Out of bed and walk around like a regular normal person would. So this is the room he would eat in. <laughs> he bit the damn pillow. Did you guys see that? There was a bite mark out of it. You must have not brought him food in time. Use his urinals to go to the bathroom. The only time he went to the regular bathrooms when he had to go number two. He used to eat in this room constantly and he was sneaking pizza all the time and hiding the evidence one day this guy didn't tiptoe around the house hiding the pizza like how didn't you catch it hey i happened to open up that closet and i see 10 piles of empty pizza boxes in here where he tried to hide them from me i see this guy's playing dungeons and domino in his closet the crust cave let me tell you something it's gonna stop because I don't want to see that ever again. And then he says to me, like, oh, all right, uh, well, what are you going to get me to eat now? I said, you serious, dude? I said, how do I know you just didn't have a pizza today? And you want something to eat again? But he wanted his way. He used to threaten me and say, look, if I don't eat, I'm going to call the police on you. 
You know what my mom used to tell me if I said I'd call the cops on her? She'd say, go ahead, I'm gonna whoop you till they get here. I tell him you hit me. I said, oh, here we go. He knows how to book people. So he would always try to get everyone to do what he wants. But now he doesn't even live here anymore. And so it's just me and my other son, Steven's younger brother, Justin. But every day that passes, Justin ends up more and more like Steven. He's gaining just like his brother did and is already over 600 pounds and I am worried he's going to end up the same way Steven is now. Which makes me realize that you're definitely enabling them and also treating them like children because this guy, I'll call him the Tonka Titan and I guess I'll call Steven the Tiramis Tiramisu Terror since he's out such a menace to everyone. I just wish I could press rewind at the young Steven and and fix the mistakes that I made so I didn't end up the way I am today. How is this guy shooting bleach out of his wiener? Because we saw that before with Gina, but I've never seen a guy that's got Clorox in their... Yeah. I struggled with my weight almost all my life. Because my childhood wasn't good, to say the least. Who's the troll that put a marathon t-shirt on the chubby kid? My mom is an alcoholic. And my parents' relationship was pretty rocky. Thrilling. So me and my younger brother Justin put up with a lot of abuse because of that. It was arguments all the time, fighting. They both look like they just sniffed a fart, but I think alcoholism played a part in me being that overweight. Not my parents, they rarely drank, but their parents, so they kind of just gave me whatever I wanted. It didn't work out that great for me. When Steven and Jesse were small, their mother did have a drinking problem, and I just overlooked it. But Jesse was about five, and Steven was around 11 when we separated because of it. My brother and I went to go live with my mom, but at that time, my mom cared more about the alcohol and her boyfriends than us. That's sad, but Buddy also has ketchup stains on his shirt. You're taking photos. Our mother always took off at night. She used to go clubbing, drinking, and she used to leave food out for us because she was never there. And Steven is very greedy, and every time there was food around, before I can eat it, he would already have cobbled it down. Wait, so this lady had to be setting out a buffet every night so she could go to Pound Town and get piped out around the city. Food was my comfort through good and bad situations, but it didn't help with some of the shit that was going on. I mean, I was still really upset because my mom's boyfriend was very violent. I was beaten physically by her boyfriend. But my mom knew, and she didn't care. I was too busy to get drunk. Man, that's sad as hell. It sounds like their mom didn't protect them at all, and that makes me feel for them a little bit on that level. But you gotta take some accountability and control your life at a certain point. You can't just sit there and say, woe is me forever. And I think that's why I started turning to food. So me and my brother ate a lot, and we gained a lot over the next couple of years. No kidding. Let's go back to my childhood days. How my mom used to leave me and my brother at home and go out clubbing all the time. Mind you, we were young. My mother abandoned me and my brother for the person she's with now. She used to buy me and my brother fast food, cereal, cupcakes, anything we wanted to keep us quiet. Doesn't seem like it worked very well. You definitely still have a loud mouth. Well, she goes out drinking every single night. When Jessica was about nine and Stephen was about 15, their mother, she went out one night and never came home. So Steven and Justin came to live with me.
That's sad, but if she didn't come home, did she leave out like a big buffet that time? Mom decided to start a new life with a new boyfriend and leave us. And it was a traumatic moment for me. So I started to eat more and more to get rid of the hurt. And by the time I was in high school, I, I weighed about 250 pounds. And Justin was nine then and probably close to 200 pounds. Okay, so little brother's cooking, the older brother's playing it slow. I was way faster and far along than that. So we were both addicted to food at that point. I try to keep less food in the house, but Steven wanted pizza all the time. He just fell in love with pizza. And sometimes Steve would take a tantrum fit if he didn't get what he wanted. He was out of control. I just couldn't control him. Okay, find me somebody that doesn't love pizza. Also, everybody around that time was doing this slim shady hat look or whatever. I don't know, be shady, whatever you want to call it. One time my dad and I got an altercation. He hit me and then I hit him and I called the police. He got arrested and he told me to drop the charges and he would get me a large pizza if I did. And so I did. So me. Damn, imagine you just go to court and they're like, restitution, one large pepperoni. And Justin just ate and did nothing for a number of years and gained even more. And I was 350 pounds when I was 17 years old. And Justin was 300 pounds and was around 12 years old. I told Steven a hundred times, why, what are you doing to yourself? You're young. And then... Nobody's sitting there thinking about like the long-term effects at that point. He's just eating his feelings. He's got the Hershey Hurts and he's eating all of it. And when Steven was 25 and the mother called him up and she said she was going to take care of him. She offered to pay for me to move to Massachusetts to be close to her. So I did. But I didn't see her once I moved there. I finally gave up on her at that point. So I started to eat more, more and more to mask the feelings, although the hurt was still there. Wait, so your mom told you to come move in with me, son? I love you. You showed up and she was just MIA? That's n Did she leave a pizza? And I ate basically what I love, pizza. At that time, I was eating about six large pizzas a day. Holy I used shit. food, but I also started posting videos online because I was trying to deal with a lot of anger about my life and my mom. I last shot at people and did things to get attention. You're angry, so you jiggle your C-cups online? Don't make much sense to me. And I feel bad about some of them, but when I lose it, I can't control myself. <laughs> This video is just for you taxpayers. Thank you for paying taxes, because without you, I would not have this urinal to pee in. You need to hydrate, buddy. That looked like apple juice. Without you, I would not have this cans of food to eat. Without you, I would have pills to take to keep me alive. Steven really, really got out of control being by himself. He couldn't move around no more like he wanted to, and he just didn't care about life anymore. I think all of us kind of give up on ourselves a little bit when we get to this point, but it sounds like this kid never really cared about himself in the first place, or he just felt such low self-esteem from his parents kind of abandoning him. And then I was 31 years old when I moved back in with my dad. And I was in the upper 600s at that time. Stephen came back home, and he was up to his old tricks of abusing me mentally. He couldn't hit me physically because he couldn't get up. But he used to pound on my wall over and over again until I finally...
Invest in some damn earplugs, because then he can't do anything. Yeah. Gave him what he wanted. And I lived at home until just recently. I've had to stay in a hospital because I just can't walk or get around on my own anymore. Until the last one kicked me out. And now I have to find a way to go to Houston because Dr. Nazardin is the last person that I can go to. I mean, we could hitchhike, I guess. I don't know how well that's going to work out for you, but we could try. I'm really glad this is happening. So no matter what happens, I'm not going to mess this up. Three days Kent Hospital. Stephen's been accepted by doctor now. As a patient, has been approved for medical transport. Okay. Wait, this is a twofer? Why is this kid coming? Today, my dad and I are packing our bags, and we're going to leave for the hospital and then down to Houston. My son Steven is going to be transported in a medical RV to Houston, and I'm going to follow him. And my son Justin wants to come with me. I'm going to Houston to make sure my brother gets settled in all right and to meet the doctor as well, because I want help with my weight, too. That's good. At least he's trying to get his in check, too. But I didn't know they had medical RVs. But I'm feeling a little bit nervous for the trip because I want to be stuck in an RV for like 29 hours. And the road trip can be risky because there's a lot of things that can happen health wise. So just hope things go smoothly. The legs breaking. Yeah, the legs breaking. Ready? One, two, three. This guy can stand up. We saw him do it. Like, he's making them break their back for nothing. How you doing back there? Yep. Good. I've never had to do anything like this. But I've let myself get to a place where I have to go halfway across the country because I have no other options after this. I have no idea where we are. We've been on the road for a few hours now. I'm traveling to Houston in a medical RV, and I still have a long way to go. Like, tw dude, sitting in the back of his fat transport playing Candy Crush, I bet. 25 to 30 hours at least. But I'm already really hungry, and I need to start eating something, or I'm gonna feel really bad. Oh, God. Better call the pizza pimp. We need a happy meal over here. Bro? I want to get something to eat. So Already you're hungry. Yeah, all right. Bye. When I crave something, I have to eat. No matter what, I'm going to eat, and someone is going to get it for me. I have an addiction to food. Thank you. It's bad. When that feeling overwhelms you, it's almost impossible not to give in. I mean, I liked food too, but I don't know. Was I addicted? I, I guess I kind of ate my feelings. You can't resist the cravings. And I've never been on the road like this where I'm not sure when I can eat next. And it makes me you got a Grubhub driver behind the damn car the whole way. We want to eat every time we pass a place with food. Mm, um. Whoa. Because I don't know how long it's going to be until we see another place. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh! Uh. What happened? The bed, the bed just hit a big, huge bump and it burned. Oh shit. The weight wreck at Ralph strikes again, buddy. I broke one bed before, man, but it was aluminum. I blame Ikea for that one.
broke. The rail came off, right? No. Oh, okay. The, the whole broken. The whole bed is broke, unfortunately. Where's that spare tire at? It's right under here, and I'm trying to think how to. <laughs> Kind of funny, they asked for the spare tire and you're just looking at his stomach hanging around there. Put some support right where he's at. That's where we're yeah. We'll put that we'll spare tire up. underneath there. A spare tire? You have to hold that frame up. Is that even gonna be safe though? It's better than what you're on right now. We're Damn, we got shearing metal in half, super morbidly obese. Like stuck in the middle of nowhere on a highway, raining, not safe no more. Whatever we do, we still gotta get off the freeway. Okay. That's all right, I'll walk it here. Hitchhike. The, the back end is lowered. Oh. Those uh, airbags must have collapsed. Ew. This is all messed up, and now there's something wrong with the truck, too. Do Reese? Maybe send the blocks. Send the who? Maybe if we skipped that last Egg McMuffin, we wouldn't have blew the damn engine up, buddy. Send the blocks to build this bed up. You're gonna have to get up. Are you forgetting my legs are fat? Maybe you could put your leg over this, over the tire. Well, he also needs some well, kind of support. we have no choice. Yeah, I mean, there's... Gonna try. We need someone to run to get some cinder blocks. Yeah, you can bypass that tire. Shut up. I'll just... Okay. Side step over this way. I'm not gonna break the floor. No. I hope not. You know how many decks I walked across and I thought, this is how I die. Right here. I For sure I was going to go through all. Yeah, but it sounds like I'm going to break the no, floor. No, just go, please. You're not going to break the floor. I am really annoyed right now because my brother broke the bed because he weighs 100 pounds. One, two, three. three. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Move it down some and slide it in. There you go, son of a. All right, let's try to get your. At least they're prepared. They brought some chubby cinder blocks with them. Right, try to push yourself up. I'll hold these bricks from slide. A little more. Now cover me up. I'd be careful lifting this guy's leg up there. We see that he shoots Clorox out of that thing. I had 4 a.m. breakfast. And then I pretended like I didn't have 4 a.m. breakfast, and then I had breakfast again. How does he trick you? Like, everyone's right there. They could see all the food that comes into the RV. It's delicious. Thank you. Well, the nurse bought the first breakfast, and my dad bought the second breakfast. Vominos, let's get this show on the road, people. And that's how I manipulate my way into getting extra food. Oh my god, 1,156 more miles. Hello? Yeah. What? Excuse me, I want to get something to eat. Uh, do me a favor, save the minutes, yeah. quit calling me. I would turn that on Do Not Disturb so fast, or that phone's just gonna ring non friggin' stop. Hey, don't forget. Yeah, bye. I will forget. Bye. I can't believe he's asking for food again. He just ate two hours ago. I don't feel entitled, but I want what I want, and when I don't get it, I get pissed off, and I start ranting and raving until I do get what I want. I just want what I want, and that's it. What's he think he made of money? Oh. I am feeling very weak. And if something happens to me, you're gonna be very sorry. Welcome to the real He's in there with a nurse. Nothing's gonna happen. Let the pissed off princess just bitch and moan all you want. Steven. That's what I heard every day of the week at my house. And what am I gonna eat? What am I gonna eat? What am I gonna eat? Oh my god. Yeah, go get what you want, you big baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it for tomorrow morning, buddy. I know. 
Everybody acts like they're scared of this guy. Like, what is he? The Subway Sauron or something? I'm not surprised that he got in the lodge. My father always caves into my brother's demands. We've been traveling to about 38 hours right now. And then every 100 miles, we had to stop because who wanted to eat? You know, I understand that, but not every 100 miles. It's ridiculous. 100 miles only takes two hours to, to do. Tell him no. No, no, no. No. God. Dude, I'm exhausted, dude. Okay, dude. Still got another 400 miles. Oh. That's four more meals, buddy. I hope you got it in the budget plan because this you gotta be a billionaire to feed this big mother. Oh, wait till you see the food you're gonna get at that hospital. We're gonna give you a hamburger is about the size of a half a dollar. Uh-huh. And a pea on a plate. And that's 300 calories right there. I'm just following you. I can't wait to see your face when you get that little hamburger and that one little pea. Be careful, though, with the pea. Because you might tip that plate and it might roll off and there goes your last supper. This guy is far too excited for somebody that just got the finger for some french fries. But all right, Pops. Goodbye. Steve? Hi. I'm Dr. Zardin. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. You doing okay? Yeah. And a lot of pain from the trip, though. It was quite the ride. The bed broke, and they had to put, like, center blocks on the I paint. see that. You'd probably be in less pain if it wasn't for the six large pepperonis you were eating a damn day, dude. Like, let's just be real. Call a spade a spade. Where is your pain? My legs, but more so on the right side. Okay, let's get you in and check you out. You get up over there and walk here to get it on the wheelchair. Yeah. Then we're gonna lower it down and we'll get you in the bed. Okay? Thank you. All right. I've been waiting for this day, believe me. All right, it will take care of you. I understand. Okay, so right now, I have hope for this guy. I mean, he kind of sucks, but so far, he's not like unsavable. And your brother is here too? Yeah, he is. He's the other big guy. No, go ahead. Give me a hand. All right, go ahead. Good. Beautiful. Grab that. And he's got it on the back end. I got it on the front end. Wheels are locked. All right. We got to go back a little bit more. Give me a hand. the wheels for Toes like that, this guy could definitely steal my OF page, the Tiptoe Tickler. Don't actually Google that. That's me joking, and I'm afraid of what you'll find. I'm just tired of feeling bumps right now and pain, actually, from all the traveling. And being on the road for a few days means I haven't had a few things I need. I've been without painkillers, and I haven't bathed the whole time. So I'm really looking forward to finally getting cleaned up. Okay. I told you this guy did ballet. You see how he does that one leg move? I don't think any of us could do that. Ready? Yeah. Pulling his brother Justin is not going to be the same way. I'm nervous about being here. I don't like hospitals. And I was hoping that I can go to the hotel first. But my... I don't think anybody really likes hospitals, but... I mean, so far, Justin seems like the more normal of the two, even though they both seem, like, emotionally immature. Dad wants me to get my leg checked out to make sure there's nothing seriously wrong with me right now. Justin's leg started hurting because of the long trip here. So I asked the doctor, could he check it for him? Hi, Justin. Hi. I'm Dr. Nazarden. So let's check you out. Justin looks to be around 600 pounds and could have any number of issues that we need to address right now. Steven's doing good. He's happy about where he is. He's, he's happy about he, we finally got here after that long trip. But Justin wanted to come down just to meet the doctor. And come to find out the doctor admitted Justin because he wanted to take a lot of tests on him. Of course, because Dr. Now is the savior of fat kind across the world. Hope there's nothing wrong. 
You hear me? Yeah, I heard you. And Justin didn't want that because he don't. He wants to go back home. That's why he's upset. You want to stay? No. Then tell him. Hi. Where did my dad go, oh, actually, do you know? He's over there by your brother's room. My brother? He's up here, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I... Look at how excited he's, he is that right now he's not alone in this. But you would think that if you got that big, you kind of... But you got to be ready to change, I guess. So if the little brother's not ready, he's just not ready. I think he wants to go home. Yeah, I was talking to Justin. And we wanted to do the echo party for him to see what's going on with that memory he has and all that. And he suddenly changed his mind. He wants to leave now. But the problem is that uh, if uh, we're going to help him, we need to know where he stands, what we need to do. I mean, to be fair, I probably want to leave too, because my budget for McDonald's just went way up without Steven in the house. That's him. I want to go home. I don't want to say it. Please, let him come in here. He knows you're upset. Let him come in. It's his damn hospital. You get the hell out. Come in, Doc. First of all, we got all the lab work back and everything look okay. What's he doing with the phone? I want to film a TikTok with Doctor now. Is that what he's doing? Okay, Justin. Okay. He's looking at us and us through the camera. All right, Justin, when you're ready to talk, let me know. But we get the echocardiogram and see what his uh, heart is doing. Yep. And then he can go home and we give you the receptor result later. Okay. I don't think Justin's interested in this at all. You could send up a smoke signal. He don't give a damn. Okay. All right. We'll get all that uh, taken care of for him, okay? Just get him my other one down to 250. Before yeah, I'll, I'll go <laughs> check on him, okay? All right. All right. That's what I'm working on. Excuse me? Yes, call for the nurse, because I'd like to go for a walk, please. I thought he was bedbound. What do you mean, walk? I'm just ready to go and get back home. And I don't need help like this. Steven does. So I'm not staying here and getting a minute to the hospital. Whatever happens, I'm going home tomorrow. Damn, this guy's a man on a mission. He must have heard there's a meat lover in that room. No, where would my dad be if he was here? Yeah. Get out. Huh? Pizza. Get out. You want me to get out? Get out. All right. Well, why, get out. Did, why did you stay here? Get out. You should stay. Why don't do be an I idiot. I'm going. I'm just saying you should stay. Don't be an idiot. No, I hate his guts. Damn, that's brotherly love. If I ever seen it, he tried to banish him to the shadow realm just for walking in there. Yeah. You have a chair. Nobody's speaking English. My room's all the way down there. So hoof it, Hefty. You got there. You got to get back. I'm scared about being alone here in Texas and hearing that my brother was admitted made me think that I didn't have to stay down here alone. But he won't even give me a chance to discuss it with him. He just wants to go back. And that's disappointing to me. Because, uh, because the tantrum works, he gets what he wants, he doesn't have to stay there and actually put in the work he would have to to lose that kind of weight. It would be better if we could do this together. So the reality of all this, and that I'm going to be alone, is sinking in. And this is all getting really, really scary. I'm not staying because I wasn't supposed to stay. And I shouldn't have come here, and I shouldn't have put myself into a position where my brother could pressure me for anything. This is his deal, and this help is all for him.
and I just want to get as far away from him as possible right now. What happened to the old car they had? Did Steven bust the suspension living in it for a week? Or do we just have to get a rental van because we're too big? I've been in the hospital for a day, and I'm feeling very optimistic about things right now. Steven, oh. do you think you can uh, stand on a scale and get your accurate weight? Absolutely. Right. He looks like he's enjoying that way too much for my own good. I'd like to know if some of you nurses have ever been given somebody a sponge bath, and they slipped a little surprise out there like something popped out to say hello. But Let's bring the scale and get you over there. Okay, sir. So I want to get his accurate weight and start him on a controlled diet. I think I figured out why this guy, guy's mad all the time. He can't relieve any uh, tension by peppering his pepperoni. You know what I'm saying? 7.30. 7.30? 7.30. Very good. Well, it's not good. Yeah, 7.30 is the uh, starting point, so we're going to get you down to 2.50. All right, I'm ready. 7.30 is what happens when you keep sticking your boobs in the banana cream. Okay, Steven, we're going to start doing a controlled diet here in the hospital. That's going to be 1,000 calories a day. High protein, low carb. We should be able to get you to lose at least 50 pounds a month. Thank you, doctor. All right. Nice seeing you guys. All right, won't be bad. Try to shake your hand. Damn, 50 pounds a month? Dr. Now's going easy on him. I've seen him go way harder on other people. I'm not looking forward to this diet, but I know I gotta do it. But I'm not gonna lie. If someone would have brought me some fast food or something, I'd probably eat it. You damn skippy, because I'm on keto right now. That looks like my breakfast, and I'm getting so sick of eggs, they make me want to, like, yak. Because I'm a fast food junkie. It's just my addiction. But I'm trying to fix it. But maybe my dad will order me something as a going away present. Because he and my brother are going back today. Surprise! We got you some extra cheese as a going away gift while you're on a weight loss program. If dad does that, I'm going to be super pissed. Uh, it's kind of sad. I'm just used to seeing them every day. It's very hard. I'm hoping I can talk Justin into getting help too. I, don't, I, don't. I really hate the way he chews gum. Basically, Justin agreed that he would accept the help from Dr. Lazadin and come back to Texas to this hospital. Right, Justin? Yes, you will do that. Justin's his own man, even if he acts like a toddler and makes TikToks with Dr. Now. I'm really just ready to go home. We on. Better room. I don't need any of this or to deal with my brother anymore. And I shouldn't have come down. Quit chewing like a cow. I'm saying, I can't stand that. That's like, it's one of my ex ladies. So, I just want my test results and I just want to leave. I don't care about getting help here. I'll try to do it on my own, as long as it's away from my brother. And his baby foot. Well, I'm leaving. Don't stop. <laughs> Aww. Just think about something. You're gonna be 250 pounds when you get back. If I die, I love you. You, you ain't got... Did you bring him a goodbye pizza? Because I know he's waiting for his gift. That's what he said like a few minutes ago. 
But I think the calories are just leaking out of his eyes. Men don't cry. Duh. I die. I know I never said that though, okay? I'm sorry. We're gonna die. I'm sorry for everything I did though in the past, okay? <laughs> don't worry about it. Say bye to your brother. Go. Uh, just walk up to the air. You can walk up there. Jerk. Stupid. Bye. Want a handshake? Sure. Bye. I've never seen such disdain for each other from brothers before. <laughs> I've never been more than a couple hours away from my family, and I'm terrified at the thought of both of them leaving right now. What if something happens and they can't get to me in time? It's just hard to try to say goodbye to them, knowing that maybe this is the last time I see them. I think they're both pretty immature, because I think this guy brought a minion doll with him. And how old is he? 33? Okay, I'm gonna need help with my right leg. Back into the bed, I can get the left one in. Right. Okay. Time to do that little wash rag whirlwind move you do, lady. I've been in the hospital now for a little over a month and it hasn't been too bad. It's hard, but it feels good to do what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what she said. Thank you. So for the most part, I'm feeling really good. But there have been some frustrating moments that have been harder for me to deal with. Mostly how long it takes for people to respond to the call button. My lunch is awfully late. Oh, he just left just now. All right, so it should be here then. Okay, thank you. Oh, this guy sucks. I bet the nurses hate him. Anytime, I've been in the hospital overnight like twice. And I have never bugged the nurses with the call button. Like, they'll come in and check on me. And they even told me they played rock, paper, scissors to see who got to be my nurse because I like to joke around with them. Nurses, the fun part of being in the hospital is flirting with nurses. I get frustrated sometimes. That's what's going on. Yeah. I'm not trying to be mean. Trust me, I'm not. I'll be okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. When I hit my call button, I know that a bing goes off and there's a blinking green light so they know when I'm waiting and when they're taking too long. And they should really respond faster, but they don't. I'd be fired so quick dealing with this guy, because I'd have to hold back so hard. Ooh, ooh, I don't like him. I'm calling for the nurse. I need to inform her with something. I'm calling for my pain medicine, my nurse. Your nurse? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me tell her. These people are really, really, really getting on my last nerve. It's very frustrating how long I have to wait for everything. Okay, you did this to yourself. You can't expect people to wait on you hand and foot now. Just because you want something don't mean that they're going to drop everything. There are other friggin' patients. Come on. I have to call them and check on things or nothing happens. Hi, honey. Thank you, nurse. I do express myself. If I feel like something's not right, I'm gonna point it out and say it's not right, you know? I would unplug that light so damn fast. We're starting to develop some issues with Steven. Over the past month, a lot of his pathological behavior started to come out. This guy is probably, he's up there. I see why he's so infamous now, because I thought, like, at the beginning, there was a little bit of hope. But I haven't seen this before, so it don't look like it's going to end well. He's become abusive to hospital staff, and he expects everybody to wait on him hand and foot. I need somebody in my room immediately. I have been waiting. I want this light off. He thinks the one. So get up and flip it off, Twinkle Toes. What the f What is wrong with this guy? Or should revolve around him like a child does. And that is not acceptable behavior. Steven. Hey. How are Tackle you today? It. Okay, how are you? 
All right, so you seem like you have an issue getting along with hospital staff, and I'm not liking what I'm hearing. At times, you know, um, I, I sometimes I get frustrated. I tell them, if I act like a kid, I want you to treat me like a kid. How old are you? I'm 33 years old. Okay, let's treat him like a kid. Take some of this uh, pain medicine from him, start giving him children's Motrin, and see how he likes that. So it's time for you to grow up. It seems like this nurse is uh, getting agitated with your behavior. I don't know what particular is, but you need to work on that too. It Everybody has that. feelings. Um, uh, yeah, that's yeah. true. I'm glad you realized that. And let let me put it in plain thing. It came from up north, but this is Texas. Yes, it is. You're going to have to shape up in Texas. It's a Texas, buddy. Everything's bigger in Texas, including the Bucky's briskets, baby. Come to Bucky's. And behave like people in here. All right? Yes, sir. I don't want to hear of this issue again. Yes. And if I do, then this is going to be a very different conversation. All right. All right. Nice to see you, Dr. Nazada. Then uh, doctor, now is a black belt for the biggins. You ever been roundhouse kicked by a 75-year-old man? You're about to, buddy. Henry. Henry for? Because I need to talk to him for a sec. Okay, because you just pushed it 10 minutes ago. I need to talk to Henry. Okay. Oh. David. They took my tray somewhere because my table is a mess in my yard. Is my tray still out there? Yeah, yeah. I think I saw it in the station. What the hell? This is so... See, they're starting to get mad now. They're playing little tricks called hide and seek with the ham. And that's what happens when you piss off nurses and you can't get out of bed. Annoying. Does someone bring in my tray? Are you f***ing serious? After yes. Dr. Nesreden talked to him, Steven didn't change at all. He keeps bothering, he keeps calling. Damn it. Now that guy looked pretty muscular. He can give him a little rear naked choke and then he won't be too damn happy then. Are they serious? I hit that by an accident because I don't feel good, you know what I'm saying? You know that. I never seen any patient like Steven. He asking for pain medicine every 15 minutes and then he spilled urine on the Ew! R. Kelly of the Reese Cups here throwing pee everywhere. Get him up out of here, lady. Like, kick him out. Lord. I'm just really upset, okay? Steven, what's going on with your behavior? You got a Get whole it. host of complaints from the nurses that you need to change your behavior. You haven't. I know that, and I apologize for you. Apology mean nothing. You come here for help, and at this point, there's nothing I can do to help you. So you're done here. Damn. The eviction for the eclairs, buddy. I mean, he this was his last friggin' hope, too. That sucks, buddy. You are that terrible a person that they don't even want to save your life anymore. They were trying. I've been doing good and everything, please. And unless you have an emergency, you will not be admitted back. I've been good. I, I swear I apologize to everybody. If you want to stay in the program, you need to find a place to stay because you're not staying here anymore. So your father needs to set you up somewhere else. I don't... Damn, Domino's daddy to the rescue again. What's he going to do at home, though? He won't have a damn call button. I don't have anywhere else to live. If you say you have nowhere at all, I will have you drop in homeless shelter in a few minutes. You are finished. Can I please have another chance? No. Your behavior at this point dictates that nobody can help you in here. Please. Drop him on the corner with a pee jug that says, we'll dance for change. I don't do, he'll do that little banana cream boob trick. He could do that for money. I want him. Poor baby. Steve, there is no room for negotiation in here. This is not going to be tolerated by anybody. I'll do anything for another shot. You want to help, you don't abuse people around you. I'm and you call your it. dad. Come pick you up. Can you call him? Very well. 
we call your father to find out where we would take you. Imagine receiving that call. Your son is such a pain in the ass. You have to fly down here and take him somewhere because we can't stand him. Hello? Yeah, this is Mr. Adam. Call me about Steven. Yeah. Steven has been misbehaving and he has not listened to any of the warnings given him. So he I mean, Steven sucks more than Jenna Jameson on a Friday. He's no longer welcome in the hospital for how he abused his staff. But if you want him to stay in the program in Houston, then you need to come down here and get him set up at a residence of his own. When do, when do you want me down? Well, I, you know, I, I think that tomorrow will be great, uh, so we can uh, transition him on moving him to apartment. Not even. I would say you've made this problem, fix it yourself. Because dad stepped in, tried to save him far too many times, and he knows that somebody will just swoop in and save him when shit goes south. When he goes to his own apartment now, he's going to have to check in with you, right? We're going to uh, periodically check with him. We're going to have a home health, and he definitely going to need a psychiatric evaluation and counsel. Okay, I'm hoping that I can get a flight up tomorrow morning so I can be there by okay. tomorrow. Uh, that'd be great. Well, Dr. Now, thank you for calling. All right, bye bye. Okay, bye. It almost looks like this guy's excited to be the hero that kind of swoops in and helps his son. Maybe he feels some kind of resentment for the way their mom treated them. Not resentment. Feels some kind of way for the way their mom treated them, and now he wants to make up for it. I'm not sure, but he's doing way too much. Why? Why is he doing this? When he knows this is his last opportunity to get help. I told you. What? He was going to do something stupid. I'll tell you the truth. I don't know how this is going to turn out when I go down there. Either he wants to live or he don't want to live. That's a choice he's got to make it. I can't make it for him because he's an adult. I mean, Pops ain't wrong, but Justin's not far behind him. Have fun. Yeah, gee, thanks. I really have doubts that it's going to work for Steven in the apartment, but I'm praying to God that it does. Good morning, sir. Hello. Pop up pepperoni to the friggin' rescue. What's going on today? Anything? Nothing. Don't feel good. Don't feel good? Nope. Didn't eat breakfast, didn't eat lunch. My dad made it into town a little while ago, and he had to come down all the way from Rhode Island to help move me into an apartment. Hey, a hunger strike here could be pretty helpful. I didn't know that we, this is all we had to do. Threaten to kick people out, they'd lose weight. So I don't see why all this has to be such an inconvenience. Because this is not a good idea medically. Hi, hey, Steven. Hello. How are you today? I have no appetite. You're not hungry? No. Did you drink anything? No. You're going on a food strike or what? <laughs> Not a food strike, I just don't feel good. Well, that's a consequence of your own choices. But I don't think this guy's done consequences very much his whole life. He's kind of just bulldozed people and they've done what he wanted. But you can use this opportunity to learn to do things on your own. If he's been there for months, he should have lost probably like a buck fifty at this point. You lost uh, over 100 pounds. Okay, so now I want you to lose another 60 pounds over next month. I mean, over 100 pounds ain't nothing to shake a stick at. You do that and start to behave yourself, you'll be ready for weight loss surgery. Okay. Steve, I'll see you later. Thank you, Dr. Nassar. All right. Thank you. Steven is very good at manipulation, so this is not going to be an easy process at all. Hopefully, he will stick to the program and cooperate now that he knows that there is consequence to his behavior. But it's likely going to be harder than that. I don't know, man. This guy doesn't strike me as, like, getting on the straight and narrow from just one thing going wrong. I think he's going to bury himself at all costs. I don't like this. Here we go. But I am a little curious about what my new place looks like. 
Wow. Okay, thank you. How long do you guys think before he Googles restaurants near me the second he gets in there? Thanks, guys. I want to go here. I love rug. Give me a phone. Uh-oh, that's the same kind of bed. We got any cinder blocks in here? I got the number. For what? For what? Pizza. Oh, my God. All right, Dad, I want pizza. And I, I really don't want you to have it. It's the only time I want to have it, so... What do you want? Yeah, just this one time, Dad. You're the pepperoni pimp. Bring me my pizza. God, this guy. If he gets him pizza, I'm going to be pissed. What? Just a large pizza with cheese and pepperoni and two liter bottle of Coke. I learned a long time ago there's no point in fighting Steven. If he wants pizza... Yeah, because he can't get up to fight you. Just walk away. Pizza, he is going to get it. Just for delivery or pickup? Uh, for delivery. I need a um, large cheese and pepperoni. I don't know, but he's just going to want something. Oh. Those guys are going to walk and go like this. All right? Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Oh, my God. This is this guy is such a dummy, man. Yeah, you happy? Yep. Have a party. I will. I know you will. Look, I have a piece. Buddy, I haven't eaten since 6 o'clock this morning. I don't give a damn about you. You're the pizza burner. He don't care if you eat or not. He's about to do crazy things to that cheese if you leave the room, because he looks a little turned on eating this thing. Can I have a slice? Either you say yes or no. No. You know you had to eat me eat that, right? Yeah. I'm not going to mess up my weight loss. After this, I'm going back on the diet plan and sticking with it. But in honor of being in my new home, I'm going to have this meal. Oh, it's a housewarming pizza. I get it. it. Makes a little more sense when you look at it that way. Oh, shit. We gained I've 50. been in my own apartment for a month now. My dad went back the day after I moved in. And it was really scary at first. Because I had to do things on my own. But I feel free. What I was really nervous about was that the holidays are coming up. And I've never been alone on Thanksgiving or Christmas. So it was just scary knowing I'd be alone. Bro, you... Christmas? Who gives a damn? Unless the elves are bringing you some damn pizza. Like, this guy don't care at all about his life. He's just ready to throw it away on a whim for some crust. Well, hello? But I've had a personal care assistant to help take care of me. And I like Princess so far. She comes over and bathes me, prepares food for me, and she makes sure I'm doing OK. I see that you got that cranberry juice container right next to you, which means that you drunk juice. When? I don't know, but you drunk it. That is bull I love cran grape, cran apple. That was like my kryptonite at my heaviest. I drank the whole thing in one sitting. Oh crap. We're gonna do water today. Okay. I know, I see. <laughs> I've been taking care of Steven for a month now. And he can be a handful at times, but I like challenges and he is a challenge. So you're fighting my temptation for me. I'm trying to, we're gonna do it. To be fair, you probably should drink water until you can see your willy again. Together. See? Thank you. Basically, I asked Princess if she can help me stick to Dr. Nazadin's plan by keeping me on a thousand calorie diet and not making it go over that. Okay, so your dinner was 340 calories. You just, ah. you, what you should have substituted was water. I did not know what I was doing with the juice, so I just kept pouring it. I was like, mm. Bro, there's no way that he's sticking to that low of calories. He's got to be getting food from someone. Mm, I have an appointment to see the doctor here soon. And when I do, I know I need to hit my weight loss goals to show him I can do this. Or I know he's not going to approve me for surgery. 
cheeks out for extra cheese. Oh, shit. Oh, this guy's a nightmare. Somebody just take his damn phone. What do you want? I'm not talking to him. What do you want? I ain't got no food here. If you don't believe me, ask Princess. That's not my fucking uh, problem. That's your problem, not mine. No, I did not get any food today. Well, you had three meals delivered. Sorry. No, I did not. Yes, you did. No. I'm pretty sure that's Princess's job to bring him meals. You better tell this guy he's got to hoof it if he wants anything extra. I did it. Well, guess what? I don't have no money and I am broke. So you can threaten me all you want. Well, then there's going to be issues. Then there's going to be issues. I will check my phone off and so ain't Jesse. Goodbye. Don't come down here. Bye. Or what? You're going to chase him around the damn apartment? I don't think you can make any threats here. Call the calorie cops on him again like you did at the start? Never. Bye. Never, ever, ever, ever. Bye. Blood sugar's dropping. He's getting mad again. Uh-oh. on the way to Stephen's house. I received a call that he wasn't answering the door, nor is he responding to uh, phone calls. That's not like him. It's been a little over two months since Stephen left the hospital, and he missed his last doctor's appointment. I'm not sure if it's because he's hiding something or if he's in trouble. Would love to see how many points this guy has on his Domino's app because I bet he has a ton, man. They probably could get all kinds of free pizza. Steven is Princess. This is not acceptable behavior. Now I'm going to try with my key, okay? I'm coming. Have it your way. Well, Steven. What? Where'd Heavy Houdini go? And Okay, Stephen Asante is not here. Stephen never leaves here without taking his tablet. He also don't go anywhere without one of those walkers, so he got out of here by a wheelchair. <clears throat> Stephen just got a prescription filled, and it's hydrocodone, and it was 100 count, and it, they're gone. So he took the equivalent to knock out an elephant. I think... Damn, buddy's letting it rip. He's in another universe at this point. But also, what? Well, how are they going to find him? Like, where'd he go? Did he have a slight problem? Oh, what I should do is I'm going to press redial and see the last number that he called. Hello? Which hospital is this? Hi, I was trying to see if y'all have a patient there. Asante? So you do see him in the ER? All right, I sure thank you, ma'am. Damn, homie's hospital hopping just because he's mad that nobody's ordering him food. Steven is having some abnormal behavior that is concerning. Princess called me to tell me how Steven is abusing the system to get painkillers. Look at that right now. That guy pulls up to your house, lady. You're just throwing your panties at him. That's a stud. He also missed the last appointment with me and has been turning away the psychologist when they have come to see him. So I'm stopping in to have a talk with him today. Steven. Hi. How you doing? Okay, how are you? I'm doing okay. You're pulling your hair out. Well, I'm not pulling it out like big, huge pieces, but they're like little strands that accumulate. In the crazy cheesy stuff crust is going on here. This guy's losing his shit big time. Most people just say they're pulling their hair out as an expression, but you actually do it. You missed your appointment with me last week. Do you think you lost any weight? 
Well, I, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know. I see you pizza in here. Damn, we got so fat, we're talking in tongues now. Holy hell. How many times you order pizza since uh, you've been here? Probably like two. Two, t two times that she knows. How many times that she didn't know that you ordered pizza? Don't look at her. Well, when I first got here to the apartment, I had a pizza. I feel the guilt every time I eat it. I do. I don't want to hear about your guilt. So you miss your doctor's appointment, and you are abusing your pain medication and going to all these hospitals. Damn, this guy just, he don't want to save himself at all. He's ripping out his hair. He's getting higher than giraffe nuts. And then he's over here going hospital to hospital for, with a Domino's delivery driver or whatever. It's insane. That. I shouldn't. And we have discovered you have done this about 20 times this past month. Do you know how dangerous it is? You need to stop that. Yeah. This is time right now to stop all that. Yes. And I need to see weight loss from you. If you have no weight loss, we're gonna drop you, okay? Yes. You're gonna be on your own. And this is gonna be end of the road. Okay. Okay? All right, so we get you a psych doctor to come and visit you. Stop pulling your hair and doing all these weird things. And we send somebody to cut your hair short so you don't... Why don't we just put, like, a camera on the front door so we can see whoever comes and brings him food? If Pops is flying into town with some Papa John's or something. Don't pull it off. Get your act together, Stephen, and you're not going to miss your next appointment. All right, I'll see you next week. Okay. Pulling hair out is a nervous tick that you will see in a child. There is some part of Stephen that acts like an adolescent and refuses to make choice to be an adult. And that behavior is not acceptable. And can't we sell that to a wig shop? Aren't some things expensive? Because right now, his addiction to pain medication is going to kill him before his overeating does. I thought Dr. Nazarda was going to give up on me again. So I'm glad I still have another chance to do this. But I don't know how much I lost, or if I lost at all. So I know... I can't believe this guy is, like, claiming mentally insane so he doesn't have to stick on a weight loss program. I need to work harder and do better before I see him again. Where's his wiener? It's been about five months since I met Dr. Nazar and, and he gave me his weight loss plan. I still don't think I need any surgery. And I haven't had much time to work on my diet. But I think I'm doing well because I get out and make sure I'm getting exercise and staying out. How did they both end up so emotionally stunted to the point where they both act like friggin' toddlers? Active. I need to walk to get to the park because I don't drive right now. It's about a couple mile walk and you know, it's hard, but I gotta do it. He's a hell of a lot more mobile than I would expect at 604. I wasn't going no couple miles. I made it to the mailbox and back. We had a good day. And it's been really nice to have Steven away, but in some ways, it's still like he's right here. Because Steven still calls my dad all the time, and he always gives in and orders a pizza to be delivered to Steven. Why, why are you asking for pizza again? I cannot afford it. All right, that's the last What do you think, Pizza Pimp? It's because you keep caving, ordering him food. He doesn't have to do anything. He just calls you, and you're going to do it. Last time I'm doing them. Thank you for calling. Yeah, could I have a um, ice cheese and pepperoni, please? Holy shit. Thank you. If I don't order Steven this pizza, he will go to the hospital, and I don't want to see him do that. That's when he usually busts my cubicles to order him food. How did you get castrated by some crust and the guy who's sitting in bed yelling at you, banging on the walls, and he's going to call the police for pizza? 
Are you a man at the end of the day? Like, put this damn kid in his place. I want him to stay home where he belongs. Email him. Hospital. What? I'm here. I'm on the other line. Well, I'm telling you right now, why'd you threaten me if I didn't get the pizza? Because I wanted it. Because you wanted it. He sounds high. Did he take his drugs? Huh? I still got pregnant. You f up. It's, it's over. You know that. You quit threatening me. You gotta go. Hello? This guy has the worst mood swings I've ever seen on this show. He's up and down. He gets his way. He's still pissed off. He hung up on me. I know what to do. Call him up. Tell him you'll cancel it. You ordered him pizza uh -oh. about eight times this week. Every time I do something for him, you always got to jump down my throat. That's right, because you're doing the wrong thing. Your son has enough drugs in him to open up a pharmacy. I know I shouldn't be doing it, but I'm just keeping him out of the hospital. You know, just be... I mean, Justin seems like the reasonable one here. I thought he was the one that was weird with the whole filming, the doctor, with the camera and all this. But Steven's definitely more of a pain in the ass. I stand with Justin on this one. Because I do something for him. That's really none of your business. You know what I mean? Buddy. You hear me? Yeah. All right, think about it. See you later. My dad will always enable Steven. And Steven will always take everything he has and everything I have. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it'll always be. And unless my dad changes, Steven never will. So stand up for yourself. Steven can't do it for that long, at least. Or give him a little sock and bopper your son or something. I don't know. Whatever you got to do here, buddy. Do something. I was 624 when I left the hospital, and the doctor wanted me to lose 60 pounds to get under 564. Look at those toes, baby. Don't you just want to suck on those? I cheated a few times. I'm a little worried. So Princess told me she'd come with me to be there for support. How was the ride? It was good. It was all right. Steven Asante? Mistakes happen. It's just a part of life, you know? So I hope I show him enough today to prove to him that I can do it. 706. Oh, shit. The Domino's demon got us again. 83. Holy hell, Steven. Jesus, Steven. That is not good. It ain't great. I think Dr. Now's gonna be really mad. What's going on? Can you know the way back? It was just the cranberry juice, Doc. I didn't do anything else, I swear. I swear on everything. And do you remember how much you weighed when you left the hospital? I was 624, I think. You managed to gain 80 pounds. So, tell me what's going on with your eating habits. I would kind of have pizza every now and then and stuff. All right, so if this is not working for you, I'm not going to be the one to write your death certificate. This is your last chance. You lose. You think they offer that service at Domino's? I don't know. They might might have to for him. 60 pounds this next month. Stop abusing your pain meds and do this right or you can go home. I do have a question, though. Yes? Um, I... <laughs> I, I do need one more pain script, though, for my pain, because I am in a lot of <laughs> pain. Your pain script went away when you called your dad to bring your food. I, I... Damn, Dr. Now ain't playing it, pizza boy. He's done with you. This is what happens when people get sick of your friggin' antics all the time. I promise, okay? I... No. No. You want to go to an emergency room and cry to somebody who write your pain medication? Be my guest. But well, I'm not going to do that. You have pain because you wait. If you don't want to pay, lose the weight. And we get an opportunity for you to lose the weight. Right, so I have to go home and be in pain, then what do I do? I don't know, you go home and you don't suck on a strong bully. Maybe we'll lose some weight. <laughs> What's your diet? That remind you to eat less. Remind you not to order pizza, okay? The dragon's been unleashed, and um, I want to do it now, and um, so I know I can do it now. All right, Cisco, unleash the dragon. Who gives a shit what you're going to do? You are not that damn scary. 
Have you seen Psych yet? I didn't yet because I felt like everything was running smoothly right now. Make that appointment and see them. Do you understand me? So you got a lot of change of behavior to do. From this point on, see, you're going to have to make permanent changes. If you don't, I'm not going to be able to help you. All right? Yes. You try to sell your walker. If you would have had a buyer, you would have had some more pizza. Pizza and he was going to sell his walker for pizza? Well, that just shows us what his priorities are. He don't even want to get up. Mm, cheesy bread. Be nice. My big concern, though, is that this is all just a performance for Steven, and that he still thinks that he can manipulate the whole system and get away with it. At this point, he's written his death certificate, and all we need is a date. He has one window to turn this around, and the chance to do that is now. Oh, God. This guy's so used to punk and pops for pizza, he thinks everybody's just gonna give in and do what he, exactly what he wants. Oh, my God. I told Dr. Nazar that my leg hurt so bad, I needed painkillers. But he didn't listen, and the pain got unbearable. This guy's a pizza psycho. Let's just get rid of him again. We don't need to deal with this guy. He's a lost cause. So I had no choice. I had to come here to get my payments. I gotta find another way to get my payments. Oh, God. <laughs> There's other ways, but if you try to buy it on the computer, you can be buying from a cop or something, though. Like, you don't even know. It crossed your This guy's thinking about going the Silk Road route? That shit is dangerous. Man. Mr. Asante, how are you? Okay. Not in any pain or anything? Oh, obviously, yeah. Say so you, you was hurting a little bit. Where are you hurting? My right leg, naturally. Right. My, yeah, this leg here. Okay, on a scale of one is in, how would you it's rate your pain? It's about a nine. Nine on a scale of one is in, how would you describe the quality of the pain? It just hurts. Like, it's... is it an aching, sharp, stabbing, dull, gnawing, burning, sharp, shooting? What type? Look, I'm not going to deny there's pain. I mean, his leg is eating itself, so I'm sure he's in a ton of pain, but that's just par for the course. Like, we're all in freaking pain. We got up to 600 pounds. We're not going to feel just peachy all the time. It's really hard to describe. It just hurts. Just pick really one of those for me. Uh, stab? Stabbing. <laughs> burning. Great. Yeah. Stabbing and burning. Stabbing yeah. and burning in a nine. Great. Yeah. You Probably all that stuffed crust with a coal fire oven. Actually, think Dr. Now is not going to figure this out. A nine. And you just smiling. Let me be in a nine of pain. I'm going to be all on the floor. That's how I always act, though. I always smile through bad things, man. It's not it. pain. It's discomfort. Call it what I don't know. I'll give it to you, ladies. You guys can be in a lot of pain. We get a cold or a tummy ache. We're down for the count. It is. That's how you know it's an addiction. Shut up. Two months of working with Stephen, and I didn't found out all his little kinks and tricks and everything else. Mentally, he was not ready to lose weight. Stephen. Oh, princess, you're finding out his kinks. Ew. What the hell are we doing over there for some cranberry juice? Stephen is full of games, and the game that he plays is for narcotics. We're all trying to help him, but with how Stephen is acting, he's about to lose everything. Except for weight. How are you this morning? Okay. So, Stephen, you don't seem to listen or care to listen. After being six months in Houston, you're still playing the same game. The moment the Dalla, the shot was given, you signed paper to get out of hospital against medical advice. So that tell me the only reason you came here to get the drug. And you have absolutely no need for being in the hospital. I mean, he's playing a lot of games, but the worst ones, probably like Candyland, he probably plays that one a lot. No, I You're don't. using this lymphedema as a vehicle to get your drug habit support. Yes. 
I am. Well, you know, well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. <laughs> At least he's not sugarcoating it. He's finally owning up to, like, some of the stuff he's been doing wrong this whole time. You have no intent to change right now. And your drug addiction is going to kill you faster than your food addiction. So that's the top priority for us to address. I mean, I'm going to try to stop, but it's hard. You're lying about everything you're doing, so why I should believe you at this moment that you're going to tell me the truth? You shouldn't. I mean, manipulation's kind of been the name of his game this whole damn time. I want to try to stop, but it's hard. And I admit that I do have a problem. What's a big problem? Well... You know, you, you hit that point that you have been before, and you lied about it, and uh, right now, at least you, you got to the point that you're honest about it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I've seen those little pills, could, like, steal a lot of people's soul. If I had to, to start counting them off, it would be dozens, man. That stuff ravages people. It takes all the, like, light out of their life, and then they're just in a bad place. But he doesn't want to save himself at all. He's just perfectly content with being right here, right where he is. What well, here's the situation. This is the end of your road for now. Okay. You're done manipulating the system with me and Ma. So here's what we're going to do. I'm suspending you from the weight loss program. And you're going from here to a drug addiction program. Oh, shit. How'd we go from weight loss to Reese's Rehab? How'd this end up happening? Well, I guess you take a whole script of like it in one day. I mean, that's probably about it. Because right now, there's nothing we can do to wake you up. I'm gonna turn the news on and hear about 700 pound man overdosing. So we need to try something different. Okay? Yep. All right. I wish you the best. Thank you. It's kind of funny when we refuse to give the Marinara maniac any kind of medical help anymore, but it's not funny because he's been so, just, he's been so nasty this whole damn time. I'm at the end of my rope with Steven. And right now, his addiction to painkiller is going to kill him before his overeating does. It is just a matter of time before he overdoses. So that addiction is the highest priority to treat right now. He spent years devising ways to manipulate the hospital and a system that can easily be abused if you know how to do it. I don't think people can do it anymore like that. I think they linked up all the systems. You can't just kind of hospital hop and do that. I'm pretty sure it would be significantly harder today for him to do what he's doing right now. So, you need to make a choice to break free from that immediately. Because he's taken enough to easily kill himself each and every day. And Justin has been refusing treatment so far. And his father has not given me update in his weight, which means this is not important for them. I mean, the whole family seems like they're just kind of emotionally stunted. I don't know what's going on there. But Dad is definitely the biggest enabler I've seen probably on the show in a while. So we have a long way to go to treat the whole family and try to save the lives of the Santi brothers. Hopefully rehab for Steven will start to turn around things for him. Maybe over the next few months, we'll start to see more positive results. But we'll have to wait and see how things go. I don't want to give up, but going into a drug rehab program seems like a waste of time. Damn, that's that's what everyone will say. He don't want to do that, not one bit. He's perfectly content living his life the way he is. It don't matter how bad it is, how much it sucks. He's happy just being there, living this kind of life. I don't like being in places where I don't have control. But I'll go because I don't want to die. And I'm scared to be on my own. I know I'm myself. So if I have to do this to live, then I will. 
All right, Steven Asante, everyone. Probably the craziest damn episode or person that's ever been on the show. I mean, he's ripping out his hair because he's not getting exactly what he wanted. He's like a child throwing a damn tantrum. But there's a second half to this. If Steven can't get out of his own way, there's no way he could ever turn this around. So now I'm curious what's going to happen next. If he actually is going to go to rehab or if he actually is just going to sit there, throw a tantrum, order some more food, and his dad's going to come rescue him like I'm kind of expecting. But all right, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, we'll check out the second one of these. And uh, as Steven said earlier, take her easy, and if she's easy, take her twice. Bye.